Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here and welcome back to the railway. Today I'm looking at Hornby's latest brand new steam locomotive. Today's loco was part of Hornby's 2022 range, so it's certainly taken a long time to get here, but finally they have arrived in stock. And the loco is this, the all new Stania Black 5 from Hornby. And over the years, Hornby have produced loads of different Black 5 models, but this one is an all new tooling and it's been designed from the ground up. So very excited to see what kind of new features this model has. I'm really expecting this to be quite the impressive model. As well it should be because it's extremely expensive, with an RRP of £229.99. That does sound like a lot of money for a loco in a relatively simple livery. However, I managed to buy this from Model Railways Direct at a decent discount at £206.99, and Model Railways Direct did a great job of getting this to me really quickly, so a great service from them there. So in terms of a price comparison, I guess the newest equivalent model to this would be the Acura Scale Mana Class, which was far cheaper at £169.99. So I'm looking to see between £37 and £60 worth of extra value in this Black 5 model, depending on whether you're paying the full price or the discounted retailer price. Either way, that's quite a challenge because the Acura Scale Mana was fantastic. So what features has this got? Let's find out. Let's see if this is worth the money, and let's see if this is Hornby's best ever Black 5. Hoping it will be. Here we go. So as you can see, this comes in Hornby's new packaging design in the much larger and sturdier box than we used to get, and that shows that this model is bang up to date, or hopefully it will be anyway. Let me show you the end of the box. So the version I've gone for is R30224. It is the LMS Stania 5MT Black 5. It is a 460 number 5200 and it is era 3. And as you can see this is in the LMS lined black which looks lovely, hoping to see a real quality finish on this model. And then if I turn the box onto its end you can see we've got a brief history on the black 5, so pause and read that if you'd like to. And then on the end of the box we've got Hornby's drawing for the model, except this is dated 2024, so presumably this drawing was just mocked up for this box, because obviously all of Hornby's design drawings would have had to have been done long before 2024. But either way, let's open up the box and let's take our first look at the new Black 5. Um, and the box seems to be pretty hard to open, it's kind of vacuumed shut, so bear with me. All right, we got it. And yeah, real quality packaging compared to the old kind. We've got this thick foam on the top, and then we've got the blister pack between even more foam. So it's nice and well protected. Let's pull this out to get the first sense of the weight. Hmm, yeah, you know, that's actually not a dreadfully heavy model by the feel of it. I think because the 2MT and the Turbomotive, to name a couple of Hornby's recent releases, were die cast and so heavy, yeah, I think this one's feeling a little bit light in comparison, but hopefully it will be die cast. I mean, if the Acura Scale Mana was for 170, this certainly should be for upwards of 200. Anyway, the Black 5. Let's see if this reveals anything about the new design. So inside we've got a bit about lubrication, shows you the lubrication points there. DCC decoder and sound fitting, so this loco has a 21 pin DCC socket and according to this diagram it is in the tender and that's how you access the tender. Accessories, this is good to see, it looks like we've got some crew to fit and there's also a huge list of different accessories there, we'll take a look at those in a moment. And there's a diagram showing where some of those parts go, so that's good to see including the lamps, so it looks as though Hornby have kind of upgraded the lamp situation. You've got separately fitted lamps, which do work, apparently, and you can see here that you can either have the lamps fitted and they'll illuminate, or you can replace them with an empty lamp bracket, which will kind of blank out the light and stop it from working. And they've even got some lamp head coats here, which shows you the formation of the lamps, so that you can recreate those if you want. So that is awesome, a nice upgrade on the lamp situation. 
And then on the back, you've got the coupling assembly. So yeah, unlike the 2MT, which was a new Hornby release, this has the latest Loco to Tender drawbar design, which is very similar to Dapol's, where you can just push the Loco and Tender together. So that seems nice and convenient. And that is all she wrote. So with that, let's open up the blister pack and let's take a look at those accessories. And there seems to be a lot of them as well. Let's take a look. So, yeah, there's loads. We've got the Painted Crew, which is an awesome inclusion. Really glad Hornby have started to do that. We've also got some very wobbly looking brake rigging there, which is deformed out of shape. So that's a bit unfortunate. We've also got plows. Yeah, that is really, really nice. So if you want to, you can fit the snow plow. And I imagine that will give it quite a different look. We've got the cylinder drain cocks, which you can fit if you want. And I can also see a lamp or two in here, which you can put onto the loco, as well as the lamp brackets, which you can fit instead of one of those lamps. So I'll be really interested to see what those lamps look like in action. But for now, let's open this up and take a look at the loco. Have we got a good finish on it? Let's find out. Let's take the plastic off, big moment. Oh, we certainly have. Yep, that is a really lovely finish. So not too plasticky looking. I think a big criticism with the previous Black 5 was how plasticky it looked. This one looks way, way better. However, feeling it, it is not die cast. That is a plastic boiler. Hmm, a little confusing for the price, I reckon. Let's lift this up. Well, let's just do the loco to start with as the tender is not coupled. And here it is. Yeah, it's looking absolutely beautiful. The finish is really top notch. I really like the satin sheen that this has got. Looks a lot, lot better than the old Black 5. And in terms of detail, there is a lot to see here as well. It really is a very, very complex looking model with a lot going on. And we'll get to some of that in just a second. In terms of weight though, this is not massively heavy. Yeah, because it doesn't have that die cast boiler, Seems a little bit light for a loco that cost way over £200. And I will compare this with the Acura Scale Manor in just a second. And then let's have a look at the tender. And here that is. And actually, this is quite interesting too, because the chassis of the tender, the axle box area, that is all die cast as well. The tender's not dreadfully heavy, actually. So maybe there isn't an awful lot of additional weight inside the tender. But uh, the finish on that area looks fantastic, actually. Really metallic looking. But yeah, a beautifully presented tender. So let me pull the Loco in and I'll show you these together. I won't couple them together just yet. I'll do that in a second and then we'll take in all of the details. But yeah, visually and from a distance, this looks absolutely incredible. And we'll take a much closer look at this in just a second. First though, a little bit of background on the Black 5 in real life. The Black 5 was a legendary design of William Stanier that was first introduced in 1934 when the first of a whopping 842 of these locos was completed. The class was intended for mixed traffic and indeed the Black 5s were seen hauling any and all types of service throughout their lifetimes. The design took much inspiration from the Great Western Hull class locomotives which were also hugely successful in their own right. Carried on from the halls was the two outside cylinders, the general boiler layout and the six foot driving wheels. Due to their success, the class continued to be built several years after the nationalisation of 1948 by British Railways and then beyond this the Black 5 formed the basis of the BR Standard Class 5 of which 172 were produced up until 1957. Despite nearly 900 examples being produced, only 18 Black 5s remain under preservation today, withdrawal having taken place between 1961 and 1968. The final withdrawal didn't take place until the very final day of steam on British Railways, which is the ultimate testament to their design and longevity. So there it is, up close and personal for you. Hornby's brand new Black 5. And you can probably tell, actually, but the level of detail on this model is absolutely phenomenal. Noticeably miles better than previous Black 5 models and easily on par with some of Hornby's best new releases. And we'll get into the level of detail in just a second. On the other hand, though, the quality for me really isn't what it ought to be. Given how much this cost, I'm very surprised about the plastic body construction. 
Having paid an absolute fortune for this model, I really was expecting to see a metal body like we saw on the 2MT and the 9F, which were also very expensive. Compared with those, this model does feel quite light and plasticky. And compared with the Acura Scale Manor, which was up to £60 cheaper than this, again, this does not feel as good a quality. And in fact, it's around 60 grams lighter than the Acura Scale Manor class. But the weight's not terrible or anything, it comes in at 360 grams, so while it's not as much as I was expecting, I can live with that. What I can't live with though is the glue. And there are visible glue marks right across the bottom half of the boiler, where the detail is as you can see, glue misting all over the model, and also around the smoke box area as well. And quite clearly this is unacceptable. It's quite baffling really that for over £200, Hornby still can't deliver a model that's in acceptable condition. And finally, despite the running plate being die cast, which is a good quality feature I would say, it is still not straight on this model. So if I hold my ruler up to it, you can see that it warps quite dramatically downwards towards the front. Which again is unacceptable on any model, but especially on one that cost this much. So pretty disappointing. So right off the bat, note this model is not worth the money, in my opinion. However, in terms of detail, it is extremely impressive. So let's go over some of this. Let's talk about the decoration and finish to start with. Like I say, the finish on the model is excellent. It's got a nice satin sheen, so despite being made of plastic, the actual look of the model is absolutely fine. And they have tried to do an Acura scale here. They've got the matte effect on the smoke box, which is a first from Hornby. I don't believe I've seen them do that before, but it is effective and it looks great. The wheels are also very nicely produced. You've got this unusual metallic effect around the axles, which I really like. I don't think I've seen that on a Hornby Black 5 before, but it's something that adds a lot of interest to the livery. And as you can see, we've got that on the bogey wheels too, looking great. The cylinder area is very, very well decorated. You've got lining on the cylinders themselves, and then the cylinder heads have the metallic effect on them as well, which is all excellent. Here's a look at the side of the cab, which has all the lining on it. That looks wonderful. And then the classification and running number, these are also faultlessly printed as far as I'm concerned. In terms of the smoke box door, we've got the hinges which have been picked out, as well as the number board on the front there, which I can't tell whether it's a separate part or not. I think it might be, but it certainly stands out well if it is moulded. And of course you've got the smoke box door handle, which is separately fitted and separately painted. And the buffer beams and associated details have also been nicely painted as well. Let's start at the bottom and look at some of the separate details then. So we've got the pipework beneath the running plate and the cab on both sides. This has actually got a fairly nice metallic finish to it, despite still being made of plastic. Pipework wherever you look on the loco really, particularly along the boiler, and much of this is painted into the metallic colours as well. Although the accuracy could be a little bit better in some places. We've got the separately fitted reverser rod, which appears to be made of metal. That's a really nice touch. And then over on the other side, I think these are the mechanical lubricators. Correct me if I'm wrong, but these are also very, very complex parts, which have the little pipes picked out again in the metallic paint, which helps them to stand out. The running plate itself has a lot of molded detail on it, including some of these rivets and also some very finely molded pipes as well, which is a very convincing effect. The valve gear is also pretty impressive. We've got some really large cast parts around the crosshead area, and I'm actually really looking forward to seeing what this looks like in motion. I think there's going to be quite a lot of movement on this Loco's valve gear. And then around the front, we've got the vacuum pipes pre-fitted, as well as metal buffers, which are indeed sprung. And then, of course, we've also got the hole in the front buffer beam so that you can fit the coupling hook and also screw link coupling, which was provided in the accessories bag. That's really good to see. Then above the buffer beam, we've got some of the separately fitted lamp brackets, which are removable in order to be replaced with a lamp. And here is one of the lamps as well. That's what it looks like. Now, obviously, a key feature of this model is that the lamps are movable. You can move them around, you can add them, take them away, whatever. I have to say this doesn't work ever so well because the lamps are just far too tight a fit. So you can grab hold of these lamps and give them a pull. They do not move at all. And in fact, the one that's fitted to the smoke box, that one's so tight that you can't pull it out without the whole smoke box door coming off. Now that's fair enough. Obviously you do want a tight fit, 
but these are so tight that in order to get them off you're having to use an enormous amount of force far more than you really want to on such an expensive and fragile model. So I'm not going to actually try to get these off. I'm going to leave it with just the ones that were fitted from the factory because of course if you break the stem of one of these lamps then you've absolutely had it. I'm not sure how you'd fix that. So a great idea on paper but the way it's been executed just isn't practical. I think at a push if you were super careful you might be able to change the formation to what you want but this is certainly not something that you're going to want to change on a regular basis. It's something that you're going to want to set and then leave because again it seems quite a risky process to swap them round. The separate parts on top of the boiler and smoke box are a good fit as you can see that goes for the dome and also the chimney on the smoke box. Yep yeah, decent fit on those parts. We do have the safety valves here which are real metal and like the rest of the model really these have an excellent finish to them although the whistle is just a plastic part. Presumably that's a bit too small to turn out of metal although I'd love to see that attempted one day. Up on top of the cab there is the full rivet detailing as well as the air vent which is openable and poseable so that's another really cool feature. And then around the cab we've got flush glazing which looks excellent as well as a fully detailed interior which is really really impressive. So we've got paintwork on the gauges, those are fully detailed. We've got separately fitted controls and components such as the regulator but there's a lot more as well. Small seats for the crew and obviously we do have crew provided with this model so you can make use of those seats if you want to. And looking at the firebox, this is clearly an illuminated firebox, so hopefully we'll see some nice flickering on this when the model is in motion. And then we've got the separately fitted cab doors, which are pre-fitted from the factory, as you can see, as well as a poseable tender fall plate. Now the loco and tender are coupled together, as you can see by this sort of snap fit connection here. And as far as I can tell, there is no closer coupling option than this. So it's not bad by any means, but I can imagine some modelers wanting closer coupling than this, as the tender full plate actually is nowhere near making contact with the tender. And then the tender itself has a similar finish to the Loco, so decent finish on the body, and the lining is absolutely perfect, as is the lettering. Not a problem with that at all. The die-cast chassis makes a nice difference as well because the quality of the finish here is also great and the quality of the moulding is top-notch as well with all of the springs and axle boxes and even rivets looking absolutely fantastic. The underframe is also fully detailed from the factory too and that includes the brake rigging and also the water scoop which looks like a finely moulded part. Around the front of the tender there's lots of moulded detail including a few printed details too. The coal load appears to be removable, although it's not particularly convincing looking coal. It looks a little bit blocky for my liking, but because it's removable, if it does bother you, you could obviously take that out and replace it with something a bit more realistic. The tender's also got a number of separately fitted parts, including the little handle on the water filler, as well as the handrails around the side of the body. And then on the back, the tender's got steps, which look really nice and fine. Another separately fitted lamp, which presumably will work like the others. Lamp brackets down the bottom, as well as more printed signage on the back of the body. And then the buffer beam is similar really to the front one, with its sprung buffers and painted vacuum pipe except this time the coupling hook is pre-fitted and there is no screw link coupling for this one because that would foul the NEM coupling. And this is not a kinematic NEM coupling, this is just kind of fixed to the back of the tender with a tiny bit of spring, as you'd see on a wagon or something like that. So there you have it, that is a quick look over the level of detail on this Loco. I am almost certain that there are things that I've missed because there's just so much going on with this model. The level of detail absolutely phenomenal, the quality though is not the best. Most of these issues I could live with but the visible glue and the wonky running plate are completely unacceptable for a model of this price. So mixed feelings on this Loco really, I do think though that the performance is going to make or break this one. If it's a spot on performer then I think it might stand a chance of winning me over. So with that let's get this down onto the track and let's find out how this runs. So there it is, Hornby's new Black 5 down onto the track, and you might have noticed the elephant in the room. Not literally, I mean the LNER P2 tender on the Loco. And this is here because, sadly, the Loco is faulty, it's a non-runner. 
It wasn't initially, it did work to start with quite intermittently, but it did work, as you'll see in just a second. But the moment this hit a curve, it cut out, stopped working, and I never managed to get it to sustain a run again after that. Now the issue is this drawbar between the loco and tender, which is relied on to pass power from the tender to the loco's motor. Now this drawbar has worked perfectly well on other models that I've tried, but sadly not on this one. Now you can see if we look at the loco end of the connector that there is some sort of manufacturing issue here where the corner of the board seems to be completely missing which has caused that contact on the end to be way shorter than it should be. Now this is not the problem that's preventing the loco from running because like I say with this LNER tender coupled it actually does perform okay. So that means that there's another fault on the tender end of that connector which is stopping power from getting through. So this is yet another poor quality part which clearly wasn't tested or inspected, otherwise these issues would never have gotten through. Now the reason I'm telling you all of this now is because I want to make it clear that these failures happened before I did the disassembly that you're about to see. Sometimes people are really quick to blame me when there's a problem with a loco. They must think that Hornby are incapable of producing a faulty model, which is obviously poppycock, but there we have it. These issues were not caused by the disassembly, they were apparent when I first tested the model. Also, as you see me test the model, you'll see me figure out that it is the drawbar issue, and at one point I'm ready to cancel the review and stop going ahead with it before I realize that I've got another tender that I can try with it. So you'll see all that unfold. Obviously, I am gonna finish the review with this tender, which is slightly ridiculous, and the reason I'm doing that is because it will give you some idea of what the performance of this loco is like when working. Obviously though that is not ideal because this is not the tender that this loco came with. There may be differences in the circuitry of this tender which have an impact on the performance. So don't rely on the performance section of this video. Performance of the actual model may be a little bit different. I just don't want to finish the review without some sort of performance segment. So it's not to be relied on but it's the best I can do. So with that let me show you what the mechanism of this loco is like. So generally it's pretty good, it's got tender pickups on all of the tender wheels which is a good quality feature and the Loco's driving wheels have pickups on them as well. So that is six wheels per rail picking up power, that is excellent. The base keeper plate is fully removable, you pull the screws out as usual and it comes away so that you can service the pickups and as you can see there are proper separate bearings on the driving axles which is great. Then we've got the single driven gear in the center there, so it's a nice simple drive mechanism. And then you've got this light sensor on the front axle, which is used to synchronize sound and smoke on the relevant DCC sound and smoke fitted versions. To remove the body, I took the front bogey off to give me access to the front body screw underneath the bogey. And then there's two more screws at the back of the loco underneath the cab. Now the body was a very, very tight fit, but eventually I managed to pop it off. And this is the chassis, which is fairly well designed, I would say, although there is this floating circuit board for the lighting, which doesn't have a proper place, it's just kind of dangling on its wires, which doesn't inspire an awful lot of confidence. There's also this five-pole motor, which looks pretty good, but noticeably there is no flywheel fitted to it. And I assume that that's been done to make space inside the chassis for the lighting board that we've already seen and also the smoke generator that will be fitted to this chassis when the smoke versions get released. But that does mean though that Hornby are adding these extra fancy features at the expense of basic features that really every model should have. A real pity to see such an expensive model come out without a flywheel. Anyway, you can see the lighting board behind the front buffer beam, so this must be where those LEDs for the front lamps must be. And there's also another LED beneath the motor which shines into the firebox flicker effect. And then the back-to-back -back gauging comes in at 14.4mm quite reliably, which is bang on the standard. So it's a real pity that this loco didn't work properly, because otherwise the mechanism on the whole is pretty decent. But alas, the poor quality components and lack of quality control meant that this loco was lame pretty much from the start. So without any further ado, let me go back in time and show you how it all unfolded. All right, moment of truth then. Let's see if this works. Now, bear in mind, I've not run this in yet. This will be this loco's first ever run. And I am going to let this run in fully before I draw any conclusions on performance. And I always say that, but it's worth pointing out each time, I reckon. But anyway, let's see if this is going to work. Forwards direction. 
let's give it its first bit of juice. Here we go. There we go, a bit jerky, but it has come to life. Yep, seems to be working. It's not smooth at the moment, but obviously it's going to have to run in before that becomes the case, hopefully. So, hmm. Yeah, I've just had to help it along there. Yeah, it does seem to be cutting out quite a lot, actually, to say it has got all-wheel pickup. There we go. It's weird. The lamps are lit, so there's power getting to it, but the loco's not going anywhere, and I have to sort of pull it before it goes. How strange. But anyway, let me run it past at 50% speed for you, just so that you can get a sense of how this is geared. So here's 50. Yeah, that seems pretty sensible, actually. It's definitely not too quick. Uh, I wonder if there's any torque there. Obviously, I'll test all this again later on if it's not perfect, but fingers in front of the buffers. Let's go up to 50. Yeah, it is able to turn its wheels, and that's a good thing, too, because it's not a dreadfully heavy loco. And finally, before I run this in, let's just have a quick look and see what the initial crawl is like. So easing it up very slowly. bit more. Yep, that looks superb. I think it is going there. It's one of those that it's hard to tell whether it's moving or not. I think it was. Hmm. I had to keep turning it up and then it kind of took off. So I think what this one really, really needs is some running in because uh, it's still powered there and it's struggling. There we go. Not touching it at this point. It's doing all this by itself. A um, little bit of a nudge. Ooh. So yeah, it's all over the place. Seems to be binding quite a bit. Not a great first run, I have to say, out of the box. But I'm going to run this in at 50% speed, 30 minutes in either direction. Hopefully that will improve this massively. So let's see how it gets on around the track at 50. Here we go. All right, here it... <laughs> I say here it goes. Yeah, not quite. It stopped immediately. Now, has it derailed? Nope, it's not derailed. It's still on the track. And are the lamps still working? Yes, they are. So it's not a track issue or a power pickup issue. It seems to be powers getting to the motor intermittently, which is strange. But I'll give it a nudge and we'll see if running in can get us past this. Yeah, it's not it's not looking good this is it I'm wondering if it's to do with the drawbar well unfortunately folks that is pretty much where the running session is going to end it's got power to it now in fact it's at full power and I've got absolutely nothing except for the lamps on the front which are still working showing that there is power in the system and also the firebox flicker effect, which is pretty pleasing. Yeah, it looks good. But of course, without the Loco running, this is a perfectly useless model. Now, I have figured out what's wrong. It is the drawbar between the Loco and Tender. And if I sort of push these at a certain angle, you can see we get power. But as soon as I let go, the thing stops. I can't get it to sustain running like that. It doesn't work the other way. Now, my plan is to return this for a refund. Ideally, I'd get a replacement and finish the review, but frankly, I'm just not happy spending £200 on a model that is this poor in quality. I think if it was just the one quality problem, i.e. the complete lack of performance, then sure, I think I would get a replacement and test the performance. But the thing is, this model has three major unrelated issues. It's got the visible glue, it's got the warped running plate, and then it's got the bad contact between loco and tender. These are three completely unrelated quality problems, which tells me that this is not a high quality model and it's not something I want to spend £200 plus on. Now, I want to say, just to be absolutely fair to Hornby, maybe I got super unlucky and those three major quality issues are just an issue with my model. And it's certainly true, I'm sure, that there will be examples of these black fives from Hornby that do work properly and that maybe are not covered in visible glue and perhaps they will have straight running plates. 
But for me, those issues have completely ruined this experience to the point where I've had enough and I don't really want to experience this one anymore. Now, if I wanted to, I could probably take this apart and take the connector apart between the loco and tender to try and improve the contacts. But if I do that, if I mess with this, I won't be able to send it back for a refund. So I'm not going to try and fix the problem. I think it's best just to move on from this one. So quite clearly, this is not a model that I can recommend. Well, here's an update for you. I remembered that this has the same drawbar connection as Hornby's new P2. So by grabbing one of the Hornby P2 tenders, I've been able to actually get this loco to run, which shows that the problem with the connection is on the tender end and not the loco end. Obviously, it's still completely unacceptable, but it does mean that I'm able to run this loco in and at least give some thoughts on the performance, which is what I'm going to do. So this is now going to run in, hopefully, assuming nothing else goes wrong. And there is occasionally a very unhealthy sounding click coming from the valve gear. Hopefully you can hear that. But assuming, yeah, there you go. But assuming it doesn't self-destruct, I should be able to at least proceed with the review. So I'll do that and I'll be back in a second. Okay, folks, there we go. Well, that is running in complete with the P2 tender, which again is not an ideal situation, but it's the best I can do to finish the review before I send this back for a refund. But yeah, the performance was absolutely fine. No more stoppages. I think the tender here obviously works a lot better than the one that came with the Loco, and it seems to be reasonably smooth, except for some slowing down over the curves, mainly the tighter ones. But let's see what the performance is like now. Is the speed any faster than before? Let's run by at 50% speed. Here we go. Yeah, I'd say that's about the same. Yeah, the gearing seems to be perfectly sensible. And uh, obviously, if you want your loco to go faster, it's got the capability of doing that. So let's uh, try it much faster. Yeah, so a good range of speeds. What is the crawl like? Let's take a look at that now that it's been running. It was pretty good to start with. So here we go again. A bit of a jump there. But yeah, with this tender, absolutely fine. Yeah, impossibly slow actually. Can it do a smooth acceleration? Mm, no, not so much. It's pretty good though. Let's have a look in reverse. Yeah, I mean, the control there is insane. Smooth start. Or smooth acceleration, rather. Yeah, it does seem to be binding a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, it's not so great in reverse. So, yeah, not fantastic, really, on performance. Um, but, again, you've got to take all this with a pinch of salt because <laughs> here it is with a completely different tender. But, yeah, some sort of issue with the valve gear, I reckon which is uh, causing it to bind up a little bit. I just want to, yeah, look at that. There's so much movement in that rod there. It's just not right, is it? Does it need tightening? Yeah, it does need tightening. Right, so we've got a loose crank pin. Let me tighten that up and see if it's any better. Right, okay, crank pin tightened up. Honestly, the quality of this is just shocking. It's actually making me quite angry now because it's just one thing after another. No way I'm getting a replacement. This is going back for a refund and I'm gonna use the money for something else. Possibly some bricks to hurl at my own head. Sounds more fun than this. But anyway, pulling power, not the greatest in the world because of how light the Loco is. It's not criminally light or anything, but because so many models these days are much heavier than this, it doesn't seem that great by comparison. So 0.3 Newtons, that's around 20 coaches on straight and level track, beaten slightly by the Rapido J70, which is the more powerful loco than this. So go figure. And to test it out around the track, I've set up some freight wagons. I thought I would go with freight rather than passenger stock because the lamps are set up for freight. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's back it up and let's attempt a coupling. And I've just realized that this is perfectly pointless because I'm only testing the P2's coupling here, aren't I? So let's move swiftly on from that and pull forwards with the freight train and see how it gets on. All right, let's see how it gets on then. This is going at 50% speed. Is it going to slow down on the curves? Yes. 
Yes, but not as bad as some, so there's that. Again, it might be different with the Black 5 tender because the circuitry may be different in there, but for the purposes of this test, that's how it runs. So for this review, I've really not been left with very many positive things to say. And, you know, faults do happen from time to time, that is okay, and I think if it was just the performance issue that was wrong here, I'd be inclined to say this is probably just a one-off fault. I'll return it, I'll get a replacement, and I'll give Hornby a second chance with it. That would have been fair, I think. The problem with this is that there are so many separate and unconnected issues that I'm pretty well convinced that this is a poor quality model that is not worth my time. We've got the glue marks, we've got the warped running plate, we've got the drawbar connector that's not working properly, and then we've got the crank pins which are loose. So for me there seems to be just too many unchecked quality problems for me to justify spending £200 to have this model. I think I've given it a fair shot and at this point I would just like to have my money back. Now, I know this has been a highly negative review, and there will be people out there that will have a go at me and say that I'm Hornby bashing again. Well, you know what? Sorry, but Hornby deserved to be bashed for this. You try spending over £200 for a model and finding so many quality problems plus performance issues, and then getting down on your knees to Hornby and licking their boots, thanking them for what they've produced. No, I don't think so somehow. When Hornby produce models that are good, I will give them a good review, and there's plenty of those here on this channel. But equally, when Hornby produce dross, I will criticise them for it, and that's what this video is. And it doesn't matter if there are 10 critical Hornby reviews in a row. If the models deserve that, then that is what I will do. So call me a Hornby basher if you will, and I shall accept that title gladly. Because if I'm bashing Hornby for this, it's because they deserve it. So a very disappointing model, not worth the money, not worth the weight. I'm sure that they won't all be like this. Some of them may not have any faults at all, that's very possible. But obviously I can only review the model that I receive. Let's have some ratings then for the new Hornby Black 5. It starts off pretty positive because the level of detail for me is a 5 star. The finish on the model is fantastic, I can't fault the decoration. It's all been done nice and cleanly and crisply and with no issues whatsoever. There's also a lot of impressive details, such as the included snow plows, lamps which you can exchange and move around if you can get them out, that is. Fully working lighting in the lamps as well as inside the firebox. It's got sprung buffers, it's got a magnificently detailed cab, and a whole host of other details as well. So to be fair, the level of detail, absolutely marvellous. Performance, obviously this is a rather generous rating of four star, given that it should really be zero because the thing didn't work properly. But obviously the issue that mine has is a fault and assuming that they're not all like this, which I think is fair to assume, I wanted my score to reflect what sort of performance you might expect from a version that isn't faulty. So it is a good smooth runner, the crawl is fantastic, I can't fault that. The torque isn't bad at all, actually it is able to turn its wheels under load, although it does still slow down a little bit on the second radius curves, which is why I've given it 5 star. Again, please take the performance mark here with a pinch of salt because obviously it's not running with the tender it's designed to run with. That's not my fault and that was the only way I could get this Loco to run for the review. But when working properly, the Loco does seem to be fine. The pulling power is not that great really, 20 coaches or 0.3 newtons, yet that could have been a lot better had the Loco been heavier and possibly had a die-cast body. That's the same as Hornby's new 2MT, which is obviously a much smaller Loco than this, but because it had the die-cast body, it was able to match this in terms of pulling power. This Black 5 is actually less powerful than a Rapido J70, that's quite insane, and it's less than both manners, whether it's from DAPL or Acura scale. The mechanism I've given 4 star, generally the mechanism is okay, again when working properly. So it's got pickups on the tender wheels and the loco wheels which is great, proper bearings on the driving axles, a nice simple drive. Seems to be a good quality motor as well although it does have no flywheel which I think is a real pity. When a loco is this expensive it shouldn't be missing features and I don't think it's a great idea to add fancy features at the expense of more basic ones. So I've only knocked off one star for that but it is a slightly worrying trend. I don't really like the idea of Hornby adding gimmicks instead of basic quality mechanisms so that's one to bear in mind. 
The quality though, I really can't say anything positive about, so it has to be one star. Visible glue on the body, the body being made of plastic and not metal. I think plastic bodies are absolutely fine, but not on models that cost over £200. The running plate was die cast, but on this example sadly warped, so that doesn't really add anything to the quality. And then of course we've got the loco to tender drawbar connector, which is badly faulty, preventing the loco from running entirely. So deducting a star for each of these issues, it is a one star and that's the best I can do. A very, very poor quality model. And even basic quality control and testing should have picked up some of these issues. Instead, all of them managed to get through entirely unacceptable. Value for money then, the full price is £229.99 and the retailer price is around £207. Even if this model worked perfectly, which it doesn't, I'd struggle to give this a high rating because of the plastic construction and relatively poor build quality. Considering the fact that this didn't work though, two star is the best I can do. If you get a good working example then I think it's a relatively poor value model. If you get one like mine that doesn't work, then it is a rip-off, and I would suggest sending it back for a refund, which is what I'm going to do. So overall then, that is 6.39 out of 10, and unfortunately that is an F, a fail. I think I could overlook a single fault, but since this model has several, there's really no excuses to be made for it. So into the logbook it goes, and it is 15th place above the Backman B1, and below the Pico Small England. It's a fantastic looking loco with some great details put into it, but it's not a model that I can recommend for so much money. Perhaps if they come down in price over time and you can find one without the faults, then it might be worth it. But at the moment, I would say leave it and wait until the price matches the product. And it's got quite a long way to come down before that's the case. Well, folks, that will just about do it for this review. Please let me know what you think about this. Are you going to chance it? Are you going to pick one of these up? Have you already? And if so, what is it like? Like I say, I assume that not all examples will have these quality issues. So if you've got one that works properly, how do you find the performance? Does it work well? How does it compare with other models? And are there any of the other quality issues that I've spotted present? Are there any glue marks? Is there warping to the running plate? Anything else that you've spotted? Please do let me know. For me though, I think I'm going to leave it there. I'm sorry that I didn't have more positive things to say about this one. And I'm also sorry that I'm not going to get this exchange for another example to bring you an updated review. I think as a reviewer, that is something I should be doing really, but I'm so disappointed by this model that I just can't bring myself to waste over 200 pounds like that. So I do apologize for that. Ordinarily, when there's not a mountain of issues like on this loco, I would get it replaced and give it a second chance, but hopefully you can understand why I'm just fed up with this one and I just want to wash my hands of it and move on. But that's it, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, I will have something more positive for you next time. But for now, that's all, and I'll see you again very, very soon. All right, cheers, folks. You take care.